Welcome to the channel rather dubiously called Rufio. I'm the best Yu YouTuber in my street, a very average player who uses this platform to trick you into thinking I'm good at and capable of playing Yu-Gi-Oh on any kind of level at all. Before we get started, why don't you hit subscribe for me, even if it's not because you secretly enjoy bad content, but because you pity me. I need every bit of help I can get. Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to another Monday Night Market Watch. Uh, we are taking a look in this very special edition of the Market Watch at Toon Chaos in particular. We're going to take a look at how things are moving over here in Europe as opposed to what we normally see online, which is what's happening in the US market. We're looking at what happens on this side of the pond. We're working in Euros. We'll have a little bit of a translation up on the top of the screen in the top. I don't know how it works looking at like this way. It's, it's weird. Anyway, it'll be on the top of the screen. A rough translation of the prices from euros into dollars and to Great British Pounds so that you can work out exactly what kind of values we're working with. Like I say, today it is a special that we're focusing on Toon Chaos as it's just dropped. Um, with this new collector's rare, prices are kind of all over the place. The boxes are sold out. We cannot get hold of them anywhere here. They are so expensive. Some places are like doubling the price just to milk the value out of it. Everyone I know that's had boxes has pretty much pulled insane, so it's a really, really good set to be buying into, actually. Um, so make no mistake, if you can get hold of this at retail price, you absolutely should be cracking these boxes because you're going to get really good value. What I do want to look at, though, is what the initial happenings are in the market. I'm going to take a look at a select few of the rares that I kind of wanted to just have a look and see how they were getting on. And, of course, I'm going to take a look at the collector's rares and see what those prices are like at the moment. I'm not going to waffle on too much more. Thank you very much for joining me. If this is your first time on the channel, I implore you to subscribe now. And if it's not your first time, I think you're fucking crazy that you decided to come back and watch this absolutely shit content. But you're here, so we'll take it all the same. Let's get stuck in, shall we? So as always with these videos, apologies if you do see me looking down in this direction or I get some hunchback action going on. That is because I have my laptop in front of me and that's how I get all my information for you. Anyway, so as I said today, the plan is to look through some Toon Chaos cards and see how they're getting on as a whole. Some of the rares, uh, some of the supers and ultras and whatever. And just have a bit of a look and see how these things are getting on. As always, our barometer for these is that they are going to be in English and a minimum of near mint you do have to factor in with all of these and there's going to be some degree of postage of course if you buy bulk from the same seller you save out on your postage so you can only factor in a couple of euros a couple of dollars with each transaction of course you could save some money if you're quite savvy about it but we won't keep waffling on we'll get started shall we so we'll take a look first at Psy frame gear gamma this is as cheap as 30 cents this is a really really cheap pickup i actually think people should consider taking this one in it's going to be super easy trade bait i think in the next couple of months you'll probably see this being an easy euro or two euro trade bait that you can easily easily make because it is one of those things that people need to have in their collections as a staple so i can absolutely see this going up in price in future next we're moving on to the rare version of chaos emperor dragon envoy of the end as with all the others we are going to see usually this price come down i haven't taken a look at all the prices so far ahead of the game so i am seeing as and when you see these things all of them are going to be going down i expect collector's rares on the other hand to be going upward overall however it is worth looking at the overall value of cards and that is what we're going to concentrate on here at the moment you can get the rare version of chaos emperor dragon for as cheap as 19 cents this is quite a cool one to pick up um Will you make use of it? It's not really an all that useful card in the modern game. Of course, the original prints will still see play for people who like to play older formats or just want to have fun with banned cards, pre errata and that kind of thing. I think most people, though, would prefer to go for a high rarity, keep it for collector's value. This is kind of just, it's a novelty card at this stage. Um, probably not really worth investing in, maybe just worth having one or two kicking about in a tin somewhere. Next up, we're looking at Pot of Desires. Unsurprisingly, one of the more expensive rares from this set at the moment. Still only 45 cents. The overall trajectory, of course, is down. We did see it as high as 150 not so long ago. But again, these prices are going to be knee-jerk. At this time, right now, this is currently the 19th that I'm recording this on. I record these a few days ahead. So we are going to see this dip overall because it's just dropped. So people will, of course, be cracking all the packs um i do think that again this is a really really safe bet on though for like a penny stock 
kind of thing. You can pick these up really, really cheap now. I expect over the next few days they'll actually continue to stumble down. Um, but in future, people are going to want these as upgrades. The players that are on a budget are going to be wanting to upgrade their commons. And it's worth noting the commons were holding a good solid three or four euro value not so long ago. It wouldn't shock me if these went up towards that mark and then pushed the others down. Next is Black Luster Soldier Envoy of the beginning, 14 cents. That is absolutely nothing. This is a really, really cool card. It has format, it's really, really strong. It's still very much a playable card now. It has a huge nostalgia factor about it. I think for a rare copy, this is really not too bad. Again, it's worth noting the cheapest print, that at least that I can remember, that you could find a Black Luster Soldier before this print was probably about five euros was the cheapest one. So to see this at 14 cents, I actually don't think this is a bad pickup. I mean, you could probably pick up I don't know, let's say you want to go crazy, pick up like 10 copies of this card, just in case it becomes good trade bait. You're going to spend a euro 50, give or take, um, picking up 10 copies or something like that, and maybe they turn into euro cards, two euro cards, three euro cards, and make yourself a huge profit. If that's what you want to do, you're into the penny stock thing, I think that this could potentially be a good pickup. And if it isn't, what have you really spent? Next on our list, this is one that I'm tipping to actually go up. I can see this heading towards the 10 euro mark, probably overall. At the moment, you can get them for between 4 and 5 euros. The going rate is about 15 euros a place. It seems to be the transactions going across the board off card market and elsewhere. Uh, don't be surprised if we see this go up. I think that this is one of these really cool cards that it's very much worth having in your collection. Even if you can't afford the collector rare, the super rare uh, 15 pound playset or 15 euro playset, I should say probably worth investing in. I would definitely have a set for your binder. If you can get these cheaper than this, absolutely pick them up because there will be just raw profit. And that seems what this box is overall in general. Most people are just making huge profits off them, which is part of the reason that they're selling out and being juiced at like 120 euros a box, which is insane. But, you know, if there's an option for people to juice it out there, they most certainly will. Next, we're looking at Chaos Valkyria, the super rare that is just Again, gradually going down. It's one of those cards that will it see play, won't it see play. I'm not too sold that it will see too much happening. It's a light fairy. Maybe it was a dark fairy. It might have a little bit more weird synergy that you could make use of. I don't know. Um, it's pretty cheap. I imagine the collector's rare will also reflect this kind of price range. It's going to be one of the cheaper options uh, available to you. It's a pretty nice card. It's a cool little thing to pick up again for the price it is. It might be worth having in the collection just in case some sort of chaos deck goes crazy. But overall, it's nothing too fantastic and I wouldn't expect it to really go up in value. Next up is Bamboozling Gossip Shadow. It's worth noting that this actually was quite an expensive card before this print. You now get as cheap as 15 cents. It's probably worth picking up if you don't have it in your set again for this kind of price. There's no reason not to. Is it a card worth investing in that may go up in future? There's a possibility that we see it go up. Um, the other prints are actually quite expensive. They were like 20, 30 euros before this. So it's worth noting that this may creep up towards the 5, 6, 7, maybe even 8 euros mark. Who knows? It's just a guess of figures. But it wouldn't shock me if we saw this go up, even just as this printing. Next, I wanted to take a quick look at Sublimation Night. Just one of those ones I decided to cherry pick out of there. It's worth noting that with the Infernobles coming out, people are going to be starting to experiment with this ahead of Rise of the Duelist. You'll get people who will be too eager to wait that long and will want to play some sort of weird amalgamation, convoluted version of Noble Knights meets Infernoble Knights. And uh, by the way, we've got a couple of videos up to help you with that. If you're in for an in-depth tutorial, you can go ahead and look at those, but we'll sell you that pitch another time. Sublimation Knight is a really good part of that. This can turn into a one card is sold. So it's actually got the potential to be a fairly good card. However, I'm not sure that we'll see much shift in the price. It's worth noting that it is only nine cents. So in theory, it can only really go up. But by how much, that part is questionable. Probably not a really good investment. But again, for the price it is, it's worth picking up probably to have in the collection. That is something I like to cover in these videos. Cards that are probably just worth picking up. When they're this cheap, you don't really have anything to lose. Now here we've got an interesting one. We've got Toon Black Luster Soldier, the ultra rare. We have seen this scoop in a big Yui. Uh, <laughs> 22 euros is what it started off at. We saw it dip right the way down to about 13 euros it looks like. And it's already back up at 18. For most of the people I've spoken to, actually nobody's really pulling this. This actually seems to be one of the shorter printed cards of the set from my experience, certainly outside of the collector's rares. So 
it doesn't shock me that we're seeing this price. And it is worth noting, Toons are a weird one. And in fact, these boxes probably aren't a bad pickup to just have a sealed product. Toons always hold a really really good value they've got that kind of nostalgia factor they've got a bit of a cult following stuff like tomb blackluster who doesn't want a tomb blackluster soldier if you're gonna play a tomb deck you want this card right but what if it never gets reprinted what if it doesn't get reprinted for 10 years we've seen it with other cards it's not impossible that it happens so the price on this will only ever go up in in at least in my mind obviously the collector's rare is you know the desirable version but even the ultra can hold some really good value the Chaos Creator Ultra Rare are kind of cover card. It's one of those big ones that everyone's going for. It's a bit of a chase card. Not necessarily because it's the most insane, but it's kind of one that people are looking to experiment with. I know a lot of Thunder Dragon players out there are really excited about this card. Will it be enough to turn them around? I'm not sure that it makes up for Colossus being gone, but there you go. Um, the Chaos Creator's got some potential. A lot of people are looking at it and like, you know, this might be a little bit of fun to try out. So it's something that people are considering doing. And um, with that in mind, we're seeing that in the price. It's starting to scoop back up a little bit. Uh, we're seeing it back up towards the 17 euro mark. Dip down from around 25. Um, where do I think it will settle? Probably no higher than it is now. I think we'll see it about 15. If, of course, it sees competitive play, we will inevitably see it scoop all the way back up. Next, we're on Pot of Extravagance. This is an interesting one because I did not expect it to stay this high. To be quite honest with you, it's one of those things where I thought maybe, you know, maybe a 20 mark at best. It's currently still more or less the same price as the secret was at before the reprint happened. In fact, it's gone back up. Why is that? This is, this is really strange to me. I know a lot of people want this card, but we're fully expecting it to get reprinted in tins, right? Or at least in Battles of Legend, which is coming up not too long. And it's going to be a while before we're back at events. People like their cards, I guess. So, for whatever reason, if you pulled one of these, your quid's in, that's half your box back. 34 euros at a minimum. It looks like it's probably going to go back up. In fact, I can see the secrets just continuing to go up, even with the collector's rares. It's strange, but it's really good value. If you pull one, your quid's in. I would honestly, if you pull these, just sell them up. Sell them up. I, I don't think they're worth buying at this price. If you ask me personally, I don't think they're worth buying. Just wait for the tins, because... It's almost certainly getting reprinted in the tins, right? Toon Bookmark Ultra Rare. About 10 euros. However, if you look at the bottom here, they're actually getting bought out of that price. In fact, that's not even near mint. That's just in good. How did you fuck that up already? Jesus Christ. Uh, faded name due to print? Print error, I guess. Oh, maybe that's why it's cheaper. Who knows? Okay, so let's ignore that one. That one's not on the list. 12 euros 50 is the minimum. Again, this is another one of these cards that I would fully expect to maybe go up in value. Toon collectors, people who play these decks are big, avid fans, and they will pay a premium for cards that help their deck move along. I expect that this will go up over time. Again, it'll probably settle for a little bit, but this is a long game card in my opinion. It'll be slow money for you. If you can pick these up on the cheap, it might be something to consider doing. Next, we're looking at Renaud, which has absolutely crashed through the floor. 14 euros. The hype initially has worn off a little bit, but actually I know that there's some murmurs going on of people who are really excited to play this deck. I have seen an awful lot of people, in particular actually some really good players, who are interested in trying this out and experimenting with it. Don't be surprised if we see them break into the meta. I think that there could be a really, really solid pick after Rise of the Duelist. Now might actually be the time to be looking just for the right moment to strike and get these as cheap as possible because it's a very good chance that these will only go up from here. Like I say, I think in the short term we're going to be looking at a bit of a settle or continue to drop down. So you've got to strike while it's the right time. But in the future these will be needed and the prices will go up. Tomb Page Flip, another ultra rare that again could potentially have some good value down the line. It's again, it's worth noting that it's just one of these one print cards that it's got a bit of a cult following because it's in tunes. At the moment, you can get them from 10 euros 90, call it 11 euros for the sake of making it easy. Um, I think that these will go up in future. Again, tune cards are always worth keeping hold of. I think honestly, the best way you can make money off this set right now is you've got two ways of doing it. You either gamble that you open one of the big collector rares, which is the obvious one, or you keep the sealed boxes and in the future, they'll be worth quite an amount. Next, we're looking at the bad boy himself, Immortal Phoenix Gear Freed. 
I'm not really surprised about the price on this. 25 euros is actually not so bad. As you can see, it's yo-yoed all over the place. The fact that it went up before coming back down indicates that there's a good chance that people are going to be buying into these. It is worth noting that the collector's rare may have an impact on that because, of course, you'll get the dedicated people who want that high rarity. But this is an important part of the Infernoble tactics. And with that in mind, that it is going to be something that people want to pick up. So if it does dip, it might be a good time to just strike while the fire's hot and get it. Next is Infernoble Knight Roland at a nice fresh six euros a pop. Call it seven altogether, depending on which buyer you're looking at. This price has tumbled down, as have many of the cards. I, I'm not sure whether these will go up or not. Again, it's a big gamble with these Infernoble Knight things. I think that they could go up in the future, but there's also a chance that we maybe see some sort of short term reprint. I would hope for the collectors and the buyers, the people who want the good rarities out there, that doesn't happen, of course, because that's going to trash your values. But it is something to keep into consideration. Do you pick it up on the hope that it goes up and you save yourself some money or potentially make some money? Or do you leave it and just hope that it comes down? But the risk there, of course, is that you end up having to pay through the nose to pick it up when you need it. So we're moving on now to some of the collector's rares. Of course, there's no chart for this at this time. They're in kind of a weird space. There's been an awful lot of issues I've noticed with the performance in terms of the printing and the cutting of these cards. I know a lot of people who've got collector's rares, or at least I've heard through the grapevine, I should say, a lot of people who've got collector's rares with duffed edges and all kinds straight out of the box. It's a bit of a shame when they're such high-value cards. I'm actually seeing that listings here now already at just good condition because something's been damaged or crimped or whatever and sometimes it adds value and then there's times where it just tanks it at the moment the cheapest you can get these for if we call it near mint is 220 euros for a tomb black that's a soldier in collector's rare all the others are much much higher and continuing to shoot up the prices on these i think that they will be good collectible cards down the line this could potentially be a very very high print in terms of price for this card in the future Next, we're looking at Black Luster Soldier in Collector's Rare. Of course, one of those cult classic cards, once again, for the same reasons that the lower rarity prints before held some good value. I fully expect that these will go up. You'll get a mixture of people who want these for their goat decks and things like that because they want the highest possible rarity they can get. Some debate as to whether it would be this one or not, but certainly it's going to be the most expensive one, that's for sure. Uh, 230 euros is the absolute cheapest you can get this for. I don't see this coming down anytime soon, again, because it's such an iconic card. I fully expect that this will hold this value. If anything, it may even go up. Chaos Emperor Dragon, Envoy of the End, another one of these cards that falls into this category of kind of cult classic. The problem here is that this has had an errata, and the new version is it's relatively useless if we're being realistic about this and i think that that's part of the reason we see the price so low if this had been reprinted without the errata even if the card was banned i think that this would be through the roof because people had wanted for that and all of that it is worth noting that there are arguably some better printings out there that are probably a bit cheaper than this but there will be certainly a section of the market that want to go ahead and pick up this collector rare for their binder Stardust Dragon as a collector rare. This is a really interesting one because, again, it's another one of these cult classic cards. I mean, if you stick Blue Eyes, you stick Stardust, you stick Dark Magician. It's in that kind of realm of cards that people just know about. Of course, maybe not quite so much as Blue Eyes and Dark Magician, but certainly it's up there in terms of iconic main character cards and all of that exciting stuff. So 210 euros is the cheapest. Most of them sat around the 250 mark is the happy medium here. Again, another one of those cards I fully expect to just go up in value over time. Next we have Chaos Valkyria, again as discussed earlier in this video, not really all that competitively viable from what we can see, it doesn't look like it will be, and as a result we're seeing that in the price. If you're someone who just wants to collect a rare in your collection, this may not actually be a bad pickup, I mean I guess 75 euros, maybe you could spend it better, who knows. But it's not bad value, if you pull one you could always flip it and get your money back from your box. Cyframe so Gear Gamma. Grandpa, if you're watching this and you've made it this far, you know you picked them up for 100 euros. You did good, my man. You did real good. 100 euros now for something in just good condition. 150 for near mint. I don't see this coming down. I actually think this is going to be one that climbs. It's a hand trap that is always going to have some viability of play, especially now with the link having been released. It's got even more viability to be played. Obviously, it swings from format to format. It's a little bit like Droll, and in fact, most of the hand traps, to be fair. Some formats, they're really insane. Other formats, they're not so great, but Gamma is a fantastic one to have. This is the kind of one that if you can get a play set of and you can afford that, more, more power to you. Keep holding them fucking things. 
And so far, our cheapest of the collector res, Chaos Daedalus. I don't really know that this has got any real viability. Not pe People aren't just aren't really excited about this card all that much. And the fact that it's a collector's rare that's 60 euros, 65 says an awful lot about what people are expecting from this card. It could actually be a really good quids in situation. I guess if you pick it up for this kind of price and it becomes insane, then of course you'll make yourself a ton of money. Uh, but it's a big risk for potentially a big reward. And then Chaos Space, one that people are widely expecting that you're going to need a playset of, whether it's for now or down the line in the future, Chaos is always going to have some degree of viability, and a generic searcher like this is absolutely insane. 135 euros is pretty much the going rate, maybe even towards 150. A really, really nice collector's rare, a really cool one to keep in your collection. I think that these will actually maintain this really good value here. They're not going to get crazy through the roof, I don't believe, but they're also probably not going to dip below where they are now, because there's always going to be some element of demand for chaos-related cards. Next, we have a Mortal Phoenix Gear Freed. A little bit cheaper than some of the others. It's probably in that middle range in terms of value for the collector rares. People are kind of excited about it because on one hand, they're really excited about Infernobles overall. But will it have long-term value? Is it iconic? It doesn't really fall into those categories. And it's slightly less generic than some of the other stuff because really, it's most synergy does go with Infernobles. Of course, it can be played outside, but that's a story for another day. 110 euros to 115 is about the price that you're expecting to pay on this. Um, it's actually probably not a bad pickup if it's one of those cards you want to play as a one-off and kind of just have that little bit of flex when you get it out. So it looks that little bit better. Again, I don't think it's too bad. I'm not sure that it will really go down from here, but I don't see it going up either. Pot of Desires Collector Rare. This is quite an interesting one because I personally would argue that I'd much rather have the Altis than the Collector's Rare. Of course, there'll be people who balk at that because you must have the more expensive one. It's the high rarity. I'd argue that Altis are a lot better and I'm sure there's a lot of people who would back me on that as well. But a nice, solid €150 Euros a pop. Can you afford €450 Euros for a playset of Pot of Desires? I guess crazier things have happened. Next, we're looking at Chaos Creator, another one of those that's a shade below the rest in terms of value. I actually think this is not the worst pickup, to be quite honest with you. Again, competitive viability, if it becomes competitive, I can actually see this rising up quite a bit. I'm not sure that it'll stumble below its current price. I think the thing with the Collector Res is that the majority of them will hold a long-term value, particularly if they have any kind of competitive viability. But they'll become collector pieces, they'll become pieces that hold value just because of how rare they are, or how valuable they are, rather than because of how good they are. Of course, the competitively viable ones will hold more value over the long term, but for €95 Euros a pot, doesn't seem all that bad. Unsurprisingly, pot of extravagance, €200 Euros is the minimum. €600 Euros to get yourself a playset of pot of extravagance in collector's rare. I guess if you're the kind of person that's buying into these cards, you've probably got your secrets already. Probably some people would argue that the secrets are a better rarity to have, myself included, but I guess if you want to flex just for the pure value of the card, this is the way to do it. 200 euros at a minimum, most of them sat around 220 euros that we can see there in our bottom end of things. Is it a good investment? Who knows? I'm not. How much can they go up from here? Who knows? I guess the Starlights have gone much higher, but I think Starlights are just way rarer, so that kind of explains that. We've seen, like, Appaloosa and things like that, but again, super competitively viable. Um, I'm not really sure what to call on this one. Do I think it'll go up? Do I think it'll go down? Do I think it'll maintain? I think, again, the collector cards, the clues in the name, long-term they may yield some good returns. We're looking at Toon Bookmark, and can you get them... Tell I'm getting tired. My eyes are getting all kinds of puffy here. Jesus Christ. 90 euros a pop uh, is the minimum. More towards the 100 euros overall. Again, do I think this will hold value? You could argue the toss, of course. It's one of those kind of cult classic decks. So therefore may yield some value in that respect. Um, again, it's just a cool little pickup. I think a lot with these collector rares, though, they may be worth just selling up if you want to get your money back, because then everything else is free at this stage. Of course, there's some really high ones that may be worth holding on to in the hope that you can milk them a little bit for more later, but there's an awful lot of these medium range ones are probably just worth selling unless you plan to play with them. Toon Harpy Lady also sat around this sort of medium range for these cards that we're seeing. Anywhere between 100 and 130 euros is the going rate on this. This kind of falls into two categories because you've got your big fans of Harpies that I guess would like to be able to play this 
some to some degree. I haven't read the full text on it. Can you play it? I assume you can. And then, of course, the fact that it goes into a tune deck and people just love this tune version of absolutely anything. Uh, we've seen it across the board with absolutely tons, and there's always a demand for these. So the question is, will it hold value long term? Again, it's the question of today's market watch, and it seems to be one that's kind of unanswerable long term probably you're going to see some gains but in the short term what are you looking at do you flip and sell it i think with most of these again the medium range ones probably worth flipping while you can and speaking of flipping we're on to our last card for today's market watch tune page flip 100 euros to 120 euros again depending on condition we are seeing some issues there again with the condition probably no fault of the buyer themselves we have again addressed there's been some printing issues. It could be one, again, to hold on to if you want that long-term value. But I think, for again, it falls into that category of that sort of medium-level thing that you're probably just worth flipping, taking the money whilst you can, and not playing the long game with it. And that is everything for today's Monday Night Market Watch. Apologies about that weird sound. My dickhead dog has decided he's going to bury his fucking head into his bed right about now. Asshole. Do you see what I have to put up with? It's not even the pug this time. It's the fucking chihuahua. Never buy a chihuahua. Anyway, thank you for joining me here for today's Market Watch. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video without seeing too much of my face. Hopefully it's been a little bit better for you. If you have enjoyed it, you should definitely hit subscribe, as you should have already. If you made it this far, you're extra crazy because... I'm just talking shit at this point. Thank you either way for joining me. We'll be back next Monday for another Monday Night Market Watch. Every Monday, a look at the UK and Euro markets as a whole. And we'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the garbage content I put together for you. Enough to hit subscribe and maybe even drop a thumbs up and a comment. Before you go, be sure to check out the links in the description to help support the people who are making this channel a possibility. Thanks again for checking in and I'll see you in the next one.